Howdy and welcome to our broadcast from AT&T Stadium as Texas a and is on the road to start SEC play with a matchup against the Razorbacks at the University of Arkansas. For our weekly cadet report, we're going to bring you coverage of the entire Corps marching through downtown Fort Worth this morning. And then in our feature stories, we're going to look at the Association of Former Students and Cadets who traveled abroad to study on behalf of the university this past spring. And of course, when the Fighting Texas Aggie Band steps out in their fourth new drill, we'll bring you complete coverage at the end of this broadcast. Now, on behalf of our corporate sponsors, BJ's Restaurant and Brew House, as we celebrate this, our 21st consecutive season of broadcast, this is the Texas Aggie Band Show. We begin each broadcast with our weekly cadet report, and this week our subject matter is brought to us by our cadet correspondent, Jessica Hoffman, class of 16. Jessica? Earlier this morning, the entire Corps, numbering over 2,500 strong, paraded in downtown Fort Worth. To successfully carry this event off took the work of many cadets, but several in particular led the effort to plan, organize, and carry out the trip in the parade. Let's meet them and hear about how the Corps plan successfully pulled off the impressive display before the massive crowds in Cowtown. So the Corps parade is just essentially what we call the marchings. We do that before the football games uh, every weekend. And what it is is just essentially showcasing the entire Corps cadets off to the population that wants to see what's going on. And also when at the, for, at the parade, what you're going to be able to see is all the outfits, all of our special uh, units such as uh, V1 and uh, Delta Company that show up uh, with veterans and uh, cadets that have prior service out there. Also, they're going to be all the color guards are going to be out there from the different major units. Essentially, all we had to do was uh, develop the plan of how we're going to get to the Dallas Fort Worth areas. Now, the cadets aren't all staying all in one area. We're all staying at different parts of the Metroplex. So we had to plan how we all going to get safely to DFW. And our rules were don't speed on the highways because police officers are going to be out in all the small towns and make money off us. And uh, don't drive between the hours of 12 and 6. And then we had to lay out times for when everyone had to meet up. We're laying accountability on the uh, major unit sergeant majors to address that, hey, make sure all your people are here at the right time. That way we have nobody unaccounted for. And our biggest challenge uh, is safety. That is the utmost priority. And so to be safe, like uh, some of those rules we laid out, we also want to make sure everyone's getting plenty of sleep, you know, getting there early, earlier on time so that they avoid traffic and things of that sort. So we're going to be forming up on Commerce Street and then headed out for the parade. The units are going to form up with uh, Core Step leading them, then uh, V1 and Delta Company, along with all the major units with brigades, regiments, and the wings forming up behind them. All 2,500 cadets, including the Aggie Band, will be showing up in full force and will be uh, ending the parade at the convention center. Now this was the great part. We got the city of Fort Worth on our side and we're essentially setting down an entire city for about 45 minutes. So it's going to be great because the length of the entire Corps is essentially going to stretch all the way from one end of the city to the other. All right, so the best part about being on Corps staff is there's always paperwork. So after we get back from this, we're going to write up an after action report, talk about what worked well, what can we improve on, and what do we want to stay away from. And also this information is passed down to the sergeants that are coming up next year so they have something viable that they can work with to improve and make this trip more comfortable and enjoyable. Thanks to those of us who joined this week to talk about the Corps of Cadets Parade in Fort Worth. Each week at this time we'll have a trivia question about the Aggie Band or Texas A&M University. Below is the fourth question of the season brought to you each week by our sponsors, the Texas Aggie Corps of Cadets Association. Stay tuned for the answer at the end of the broadcast. Jessica, you marched with the Aggie Band this morning. What was it like being in front of all those crowds marching in downtown Fort Worth? The energy was unreal. Um, I love seeing the reaction on little kids' faces. I saw a lot of familiar faces too. A lot of parents were there. Um, saw my buddy's parents, saw my parents. So it was just great energy and, and a really big turnout. Well, thanks for joining us. And starting next week, Jess is going to do some stories for us. He's our cadet correspondent. And look forward to having her with us every week. And now, back to our show. Once again this year, Texas A&M is led by their former students through an association whose name belies the depth of their resources and their commitment to Texas A&M. It is the Association of Former Students. Before leaving campus this week, we had a chance to talk to Catherine Greenway. She's the vice president of the association. We got to learn about the history of the association, their mission, and the resources they bring to current and former students. 
The Association of Former Students was founded as the Association of Ex-Cadets in 1879, and one of the most interesting things about that is that it was not founded by the university. It was actually founded by former students themselves. After only three years of the school being ex in existence, already there was a bond between the students and the school, and they wanted to stay in contact with the university or with the college after graduating. To this day, the association remains an independent 501c3 organization that works in affiliation with Texas A&M, and much like its origins, the power of the association of former students is in the former students. Today, there are 436,000 former students of Texas A&M, with 396,000 of those living today. Um, we are a very active former student base. Our former students make up the the largest percentage of the Aggie network. And when we talk about the Aggie network, we're talking about our former students, our students, 60,000 strong, our faculty and staff, 10,000 strong, our Aggie parents, 125,000 strong, and friends of Texas A&M who have grown to love Texas A&M through various affiliations. The Aggie band being one of those that brings lots of friends to Texas A&M. Formally, our mission is to strengthen the association of former students, promote the interest and welfare of Texas A&M, perpetuate the ties of affection and esteem formed in university and college days, and serve the student body. When you boil that down, what we do is we connect both ends of the spectrum of the Aggie network. We are the link between students and former students. We are the link between Texas A&M's past, its present, and its future. Aggie Ring Day is probably one of the um, longest, but one of the most exciting and the most fun days that we have at the Association of Former Students. On Ring Day in September, we're going to present 3,800 3, rings. Um, we will have about 10,000 to 15,000 visitors that come through the Alumni Center that day, parents, friends, the students themselves getting their ring. It'll be an exciting day, and it's a day that, that really brings together the Aggie Network because we have the students getting their rings, and we we also have former students, faculty members, staff members that are here to present the rings. So it's an opportunity for those former students and faculty members to convey to the students what wearing this ring means and, and, and let them know that it's a lifelong experience. Well, I think we would all agree there have been many, many benefits to our joining the Southeastern Conference. And I think one of the greatest benefits that extends beyond us in Aggie land and to the world is that we've been able to export the Aggie spirit and Texas A&M core values across the Southeastern United States. When people come to Texas A&M, they see something different. They are warmly welcomed here, and they all leave saying that is a unique place and something special. And so it's provided a window to our world here so that the rest of the nation can see what we've all known for a long time, that Aggie Land is a special place. Thanks to Catherine Greenaway for joining us this week on behalf of the Association of Foreman Students. And if you'd like to know more information, you can contact her through the phone number or the email that's on the screen now. And after these messages from our sponsors, we're going to come back and talk to some cadets who studied abroad this year in Germany and Poland, Georgia and Armenia, Singapore and Indonesia. That's next right here on the Texas Aggie Band Show. While studying on the campus at Texas A&M is the norm for most cadets, some are fortunate enough to have internships or get to study abroad. But for many cadets, they've been able to go abroad and study on behalf of the Corps Cadets as part of the Commandant's International Excursion Program. For the fourth consecutive year, the Corps Cadets sent students on three Corps International Excursions this past May. These trips were to Germany and Poland, Georgia and Armenia, and Singapore and Indonesia. In total, 78 cadets traveled to these excursions that experienced diplomatic, international, military, economic, religious, and cultural insights through a well-coordinated series of meetings, briefings, visits, and site tours that engaged the local community. While studying abroad, the cadets from Texas A&M got to experience a lot about the countries they traveled to, and they gained a great understanding of the cultural, military, social, and political aspects that they were asked to report on when they returned to the campus of Texas A&M. And before we traveled to Arlington, we got a chance to talk to a number of the cadets about their excursions to each of these three major trips. I went to Georgia and Armenia, and I decided that that would be a great place to go because those aren't countries that you would normally visit when you grow up and you travel overseas, and so it's a really unique opportunity. The trip lasted almost two weeks, and the best part was probably climbing up a mountain in Georgia. We got led by a Russian mountain man, and that was really cool. And then the hardest part about the trip was probably just the, uh, it, was, it was a pretty full schedule, so we were pretty tired by the end of it, but it was all worth it.
you need to apply for the core excursion because one, it's free, and two, the schedules and the connections that the core is going to make for you are going to give you some experiences that you will never get ever again in your entire lifetime. And plus, there's a lot of unique countries that you're going to be going to that you may never travel to again. So it's a, just a great once in a lifetime experience. I went on the excursion to Singapore and Indonesia, and I decided that would be my trip that I would want to go on the most because I would never really have an opportunity to go there in my professional careers, and this was the best opportunity I had. The best part of my trip was definitely getting to interact with cadets from the two different countries because I realized that, in all honesty, they were just like, just like American kids. And the worst part, I'd say, was just learning how to negotiate a different culture because it's so foreign. Coming away from the trip, I made some great friendships and through social networking, we've been able to keep up. Our, our core excursion had, has made a Facebook page with all the cadets we met over there and we've been able to keep up since, since we got back to the States. Before the trip, uh, we had a couple briefings that we put together ourselves about the culture of the region, uh, the language, the traditions, the food. Uh, these were all set up by the Office of the Commandant to get us thinking about the trip before we went um, so that we, we, we would better prepare ourselves as we went over there. The two countries we went to definitely had uh, unique cuisine. Armenia was more uh, vegetable oriented, whereas Georgia relied very heavily on heavy meats like lamb and pork. Uh, I had lamb kebabs for the first time over there. And then we, we also made these pasta dishes. It was a pouch filled with uh, beef and juice. Uh, that was definitely an interesting experience getting to eat those. For anybody interested in applying to one of these trips, uh, I would definitely encourage you to go because you're going to learn a lot about the international community and a, lo a lot about yourself. Um, you're definitely going to learn how to relate to other people and you're going to see how other people relate to the United States. Uh, last May, I traveled to Singapore and Indonesia with the Corps and I was selected for that through an application process that looked at kind of the motivation behind why I wanted to go there. And I was just really passionate about going over there and seeing a culture that I didn't really know much about. I think the best part of the trip was the food, honestly, because it was just so interesting and different, especially Singapore. Here's a city that is kind of like the United States in that it's a cultural melting pot. And so one night we'd go to Little China and one night we'd go to Little India and we just got to experience so many different parts of the southern or southeast eastern culture just in that one section of the city. So I went on the Germany-Poland excursion, and I, I kind of chose it because I have an interest in, uh, you know, the European history and, and the cultures over there. So I lived in Italy when I was younger, and, and I'm going into the military, so I thought it might be a good idea to try to, to try to go somewhere over there to maybe get a little bit of an experience before I, before I go, uh, perhaps overseas, if that's, so, uh, if that's the route that they'd put me. So what captured my attention the most was when we went to Germany, and you really saw... Um, I was under the impression that we went there that they were not going to show any of their World War II, Cold War era history, you know, um, they were going to try to hide it. And it absolutely wasn't that, you know, while they didn't want to show many, uh, you know, part of the negative parts, they, in a sense, represented it and, and acknowledged like some of their hardships. So that was really noteworthy for me that they kind of wore their, uh, their history on their sleeve. So when I get into the military, I want to be a pilot. Uh, my father uh, is an F-16 pilot, so I kind of want to fall in his shoes, and that's what I've been working uh, towards here at A&M. During my time as a cadet at Texas A&M, studying off campus was not unusual, but it certainly did not involve traveling halfway around the world, such as to Europe or to the Far East. And these cadets, now that they've returned to Texas A&M, are sharing their experiences with their fellow cadets and encouraging others to apply for the fifth year that will happen this next spring when cadets are traveling to three new locations. If you'd like to know more from the Commandant's Office, please contact Meredith Simpson at the information provided on the screen now. I'm Mara Lytle from Houston, Texas, majoring in education. On behalf of the senior class, 
of 2016 and my buddies here in the piccolo section. Here now is the halftime drill of the Fighting Texas Aggie Band at the Texas A&M University versus Arkansas football game at AT&T Stadium.
Thanks for watching our broadcast from here at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. On the screen now is the answer to this week's trivia question brought to you by the Texas Aggie Corps Cadets Association. When we come to you next, Texas A&M is back home at Kyle Field as they have another SEC foe. It'll be the Bulldogs of Mississippi State who come calling, and their quarterback is in the running for the Heisman Trophy. The Aggie Band will step out with their fifth new drill, and we'll bring you complete coverage. We'll also have feature stories about Guy and Hall and campus monuments at Texas A&M. And now on behalf of our corporate sponsors, BJ's Restaurant and Brew House, as we celebrate this, our 21st and second season of broadcast, this has been the Texas Aggie Band Show. <laughs>